and welcome to episode 67 of the Lonely Knitter podcast. My name is Laura and this is my knit night. <laughs> um, I am Laura, if you haven't been here before. I am from the most easterly point of England in the UK and I live here with my husband, my two children, my one cat, and now a whole bunch of crafty goodness. <laughs> I've been knitting most of my life and I now dye yarn as bumbling yarns. I make crafters balm, the hand balm for crafters. I um, write knitting patterns as the lonely knitter and you can find me on Instagram as the lonely knitter and on Ravelry as the lonely knitter too and my own website obviously which I will have the address for below. I feel like I'm very squeaky in my chair. My quilt has fallen down behind me and uh, yeah I'm doing a lot of weekend every time I move around. If you are not new here, thank you so much for coming back. Um, if you are new here, then welcome, welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is basically just where I come to chat about all the crafting in my life. And I am trying out a new light. I have not had a light before. If you are um, a returning viewer, you will know that this is not a thing. Uh, but it goes like, I can't decide how, how to work it i think i need to be like this close to the camera to not get shadow so i'm still not sure that i have the light really working i don't know <laughs> um but yeah i if anything it's actually making me look more shadowy under the eyes than ever before i'm not sure this is working very well <laughs> maybe i need to position myself better um anyway let's get started it's not going to be a long one today because i am doing vlogmas um probably around the same time this video goes up you will also get a video up on my channel for the first day of vlogmas 2020 today is the first of december 2020 i have decided to podcast and vlog because i like both and hey why not give myself more things to fail at <laughs> um we shall see how it goes so i am gonna just crack on i have minimal business stuff to talk about today um I put that right at the end anyway um I do have a bit of life stuff again I put that right at the end but we are gonna crack on with finished objects I have some now if you are a long-term viewer you will remember that a granny square for my scrappy blanket is classed as a finished object but I don't care what anyone else says, it is a finished object. And then also when the actual blanket is done and pieced together, if that ever happens, that will also be a finished object. So there we go. If you are a member of the Bumbling Yarns, my hand dyed yarn, um, monthly club, if you, if you, you don't have to be a member, but if you bought the club in November, this is the November scrappy pack. I have now knit up, crocheted up a granny square in every single one of those colors. So, um, don't look if you haven't looked at your scrappy pack yet. Uh, if you do like what you see, I think I have two 10 gram and one five gram pack spares available. So if you fancy working on a scrappy project and you don't have lots of little scraps or you just like these looks of these ones, I have a few left in my shop, but these are what I've worked on. So I have this one. I know I showed a couple of these last week because I had a couple done. Um, I can't remember which ones those were, so I'm gonna show all 10 of the colours that's not that's not right it's more of a greeny it's coming off green I don't know it's blues and greens this one I'm sure I had this one done last week because I remember saying that it's my favourite and it is this one and this one and this one makes me think of hot chocolate or Neapolitan ice cream. Or as my husband's family call it, Nippawopadum. It's greys and golds in this one. This one, I think that looks, in the camera, it looks quite similar to this one, but actually in real life they're quite different. But yeah, that's that one. And then last but not least, this one, which has given me major bumblebee vibes. So little 10, um, that is November's scrappy pack, all ready to go over blanket. So I think I've got like four months worth. 
Um, so that's 40 odd scraps. So you don't really notice them when they're being worked up, but they're up. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to talk about is another finished object, but it is also a pattern release. I have released a pattern this week for the Connected Blanket. It is the pattern that comes in the Lay Family Yarn Advent Calendar for this year. So if you have the Lay Family Yarn Advent Calendar for 2020, um, you will have a code to download that pattern from Ravelry. Um, if you're not using Ravelry, I do believe in that letter Kelly did say to contact her um, for, um, or myself, um, I think it was her, um, and we can email you through a PDF so no one misses out just if you're not on Ravelry. Um, but I'm going to show you the little sample that I knit that is a finished object because it is a completed mini blanket for Ellie, my daughter. Um, it's going to go in her Christmas stocking for her dollies because she has been hassling me for little blankets to go in her little dolly cots. So this is knit from Lay Family Yarn Advent 2019. So I bought the advent last year and I thought it would be nice to work the sample in last year's colours. And then I'm also going to, hopefully, <laughs> if I can keep up, knit one throughout advent this year. So this blanket, when you just look at it, it just looks like a square scrappy blanket. You don't think anything of it, it just looks like a normal square blanket. It's actually worked um, in diagonal columns and um, in one piece as you go. So you start off by knitting one diagonal square and the difference between this and a lot of the other um, scrappy blanket patterns is there isn't a central stitch that you work around that you could potentially lose or need to mark all the time. Um, your increases and decreases are worked on the outsides and it has these lovely neat slip stitch edges. So you knit up this one square and then you start down here, oh, getting low battery on my phone already. You start down here and you work up this square to the midpoint and then you start to join and you join your squares as you go. So there's no sewing up at the end, you're picking up as you go, but you also don't have to keep track of um, a central stitch for decreasing. You just literally, as you're going, you're joining it on. And then you can see as it carries on, you just do exactly the same and keep on going and I have also made it so that here as you can see I think you can just about see we don't cast off between those squares between those diagonal squares so that obviously makes them not a true square but they're pretty pretty close so you would finish a square and you would be down to this tiny amount of stitches and then you'd start increasing again once you had got past this center point so it just means that the only ends you have to weave in are at the beginning and the end of a diagonal column. There is no, um, there's no bits in between, unless you're changing yarns. Um, the way I am going to work these is I'm going to use my 20 gram minis. And then, so a 20 gram mini will get you through at least just over three squares. And then when that happens, when I come to the point where I need to change, I'm just gonna magic knot on and carry on. So it will be a bit scrappy, but that's just how I'm gonna use up all the minis from this year's Lay Family Yarn Advent Calendar. So I need to say a huge thank you to Sharon of the SCR1 TNO podcast, because she, not only did she test knit and help me when it came to that end of the design, but she also um, totally like gave me a whole new system of how to start in my rows and make it so much neater. So I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you so much, Sharon. And thank you, Kelly, for giving me the chance um, to put my advent alongside, uh, my pattern alongside your advent because I really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, this is a little, little sample that I made from Lay Family Yarn 2019 advent. And it hasn't even actually been blocked. It's very stretchy, it will grow, but um, it's, just a nice little square and I'm going to just bundle it up, put it in Ellie's stocking and she will love it. She will love it. So that's all I have for finished objects this week. I'm going to move on to whips. So the first one I'm going to show you, this <laughs> is the first square in my advent project with Lay Family Yarn Advent 2020. So I have one of the Lay Family Yarn advents for this year and I have knit the first square. So this was day one's colour. I think I've got the rest in here because there's obviously lots left from a 20 gram mini um day one's color is just gorgeous so gorgeous it's like silver gray with blues and purples and it's just 
but they're so muted it's not there's so much color there but you wouldn't think it because it's not in your face I can't even I can't even explain how perfect this yarn is it's gorgeous it's not purple it's like mauvey like oh yeah so this is it knit up into the first square and you can see like it is a pretty even square considering it was made on the diagonal um and that's the first one so tomorrow when i open up my advent i will work on the next diagonal column of this blanket and i will put one square here and one square here the other good thing about this is obviously i've just said that you can get about just over three squares with a 20 gram mini on one of these but because of how it's worked you'll see that when if, if you look at the pattern you can see that um you can instead just decrease you can have a, a smaller amount of stitches that you go up to you don't have to go up to the full 40 stitches across which is what i put in the pattern you can go up to smaller say 30 stitches have a slightly smaller square but be able to get more squares out of one color um or be able to work it with little scraps like five gram scraps get a square out of one of those if you decrease the amount of overall stitches so yeah that is what i'm working on with that advent and then I'm just actually about to cast on for a, another blanket. I'm going to work the habitation throw. Um, my lovely friend Sharon gifted me, of the SCL1 TNO podcast, gifted me the um, habitation throw last year. She gifted me knit bent from um, Curious I Made last year. And I am going, I've wanted to work on one ever since, especially because she's worked hers, Sharon's worked hers, and they're gorgeous. I've seen other people cast them on. And I have kept myself, I kept myself one of my advents, one of my bumbling yarns advents. I did also keep myself a crafter's bum advent because you'll know if you've been watching for a while or um, following me over on Instagram, I did do both. So this is day one of the um, bumbling yarns advent, which is my hand dyed yarn. And I am in love with this one. So I'm going to start the habitation throw and I am going to put, I'm thinking I won't just put advent in there, I will put my advent in and then I will put in my 12 days of Christmas bumbling yarns. So I'll have 36 20 gram minis to go in overall and I'll put them in in day order and um, yeah just at the halfway point switch from increasing to decreasing and we'll see how big a blanket we get. So fingers crossed because as we all know I start big projects and then fail. At the moment, both of those blankets are living in this bag by my lovely friend Jo, so can Jo. I showed this off last week. It was a stash acquisition, stash, stash, stash acquisition. Has someone else used that before? I'm sure I've heard that somewhere before. Um, last week, but I still love it just as much as I did last week. So um, they're currently, this is currently actually working like my handbag. I'm, I'm not even joking, I have... Ibuprofen, a face mask, oh, another face mask, chocolate, scissors. Oh, and the connected blanket, my blanket pattern, I'm working it on these 3.25 millimeter Knit Pro Symphonies. I think I mentioned this in my vlog as well, but I love these needles because of their length. So they're not fancy schmancy, they don't cost tons of money, they're very cheap. Um, but they're nice to work with and I usually work with metal I don't usually work with wooden needles but for these little ones I don't mind them at all and um, yeah they're the Knit Pro Symphony ones but because they're so short they're perfect for scrappy projects they feel like my little dedicated needles for my little scrappy projects so they're laying in there but I am going to take the gubbins out of this bag because literally everywhere I go I collect things in project bags I'm going to empty this one out this is my woolly goodness Christmas project bag that I bought this year and I'm going to keep one blanket in here and one blanket loose in here and then I'll tuck that one in there just while they're small so for the first few days of advent and I might grab one of my other I think I have another Christmas I think I have a Christmas Snoopy bag Christmas peanuts bag somewhere on my wall of bags um so I might use that for the other advent bits that I have going on and keep it all stuffed in here until it gets a bit big and then we will have to divide out and see where we're going with those uh, the only other thing that I've worked on this week, um, I'm knocking things over, I have worked on, it lives in here, my I Like Big Balls, I did show you this last week if you watched, 
Um, all I have done, I actually worked quite a bit on my Truly Hooked Blanket Club blanket, um, but I left it in the house and honestly it doesn't look that different because I'm just carrying on. It's a giant um, corner to corner crochet blanket, so it's not, it's not that different. But with this one, I can probably take some of these stitch markers out because I have stitch markers in here where I was um, marking my way through previously. Um, move this one. So if I use this s'mores one, s'mores, I think this was given to me by my lovely friend Alice of the Dr. Socksgram podcast and I love it. If I now clip that onto wherever I am, because I'm sure I haven't been smart enough to clip my last stitch so it doesn't un all unravel. I probably would have way more blanket if I actually clipped the last stitch because I bet every time I shove it in the bag it unravels a little bit. Okay so if I clip that onto there, easier said than done Laura. There we go. Then hopefully I won't lose but I am pretty much at the end of a row so all I did was finish off this mini which was about one row worth on my nice big granny square blanket and then I have now begun this very colourful mini but I will just hold it up it hasn't changed much from last week because we are literally just like I think I did two rows in the end yeah it's like a, a row and a half maybe so this is where it is and actually I was holding it up this week and thinking do you know what it's probably halfway done I was thinking earlier that it was a third of the way done but it's not wide enough like it is bigger than my wing wingspan, but I don't think it's wide enough to be only a third. I think it needs to be double this. So yeah, I'm gonna double what I've got here, see how I feel about it. Hopefully at some point, can't make any promises because here I am saying I'm going to cast on about two more blankets this week and I've got one in the house and I've got this one. So we'll see what gets done. But yeah, it lives in my I like big balls bag because it's got a little bit big, so it needs a big, it's a big bag. So that is all of my whips. I am now going to have a quick talk about stash acquisitions, stash acquisitions, shopping, shopping. <laughs> I have a couple of cards in the house that I've totally spaced out and forgot to bring out with me. I actually have them on the kitchen windowsill because they're cute and I keep looking at them. Um, they are knitting related cards that are going in frames that are going to go on this wall. This wall is still bare because um, social distancing wise, I'm trying to obey the rules. And my dad came round to childcare while I had to take Ellie to the hospital the other day. And um, he was going to be able to get out here and put a load of things up on my walls afterwards. But then I needed to be in here and he needed to get back. So we ended up just leaving it for this week. So I will have stuff on my walls soon. Um, but I did also get these, which I do have out here. I ordered from Mina Makes. Etsy shop which is the lovely knitting expat and she has a sister page on Instagram uh Mina does watercolor I think it's called and I love Mina's watercolor pictures and I showed in one of my previous videos that I've now got her like dandelion head fly away picture and her whale watercolor picture up on my wall over there they are going to be moved into frames and they'll probably go on this wall um so you'll be able to see them a bit more but I also ordered some of her actual cards which did come with envelopes but I've left them to the one side because I think I'm probably going to frame these but we have this gorgeous one they're like a postcard style um but they're perfect for framing so I have that one I have this one and these they're macarons right macarons macarons and then knit stitches definitely gotta get that one on the wall and then this last one which is just beautiful they're all beautiful so i have these and yeah they're gonna go on the wall i have some incredibly cheap frames from um asda i saw a couple of frames in asda so i thought i would grab up they are too far away to see if they fit because I, I didn't measure them first but they'll have i have other things to go in them if they don't so eventually those will all be up on the walls when i am sorted with everything so that's all my stash acquisitions plans is just get through advent with my advent projects i have a few little bits and bobs that i want to knit for christmas but we shall see if they happen um i probably need to make a start on them this week if i actually want to have any chance of completing them um i'm gonna try and vlog that is my main target i might not get my vlogs up every day they might a couple of days might roll together especially if i haven't got a lot going on um 
but hopefully I won't give up on the vlogging. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything. So that's all of the nitty stuff, crafty stuff that I was going to talk about, I'm pretty sure anyway. Um, I just have like life stuff and things that have been going on this week left to talk about. Uh, so if I'm losing you here, totally understand. And I will see you later. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if I'm not losing you here, let me take you on a journey through my life this week. Um, it's been a bit stressy. So last Tuesday, Ellie was in hospital for the peanut desensitisation trial. No, last Thursday. Last Thursday for the start of that trial. It was not fun. Um, but it wasn't too bad. It was placebo day we have worked out because today we had peanut day. Um, they basically gave Ellie loads of little bits of chocolate pudding and they could have had peanut in or not. We didn't know. And if she didn't have a reaction, then we assumed it was placebo day. Um, basically she sat there, couldn't eat anything other than these tiny amounts of chocolate pudding. And I mean, like some of them were on, there was like a lid this big and it was like a little speck in the middle. And then it got bigger and bigger and bigger as she went throughout the day. So last Thursday, no reactions at all. The only thing she was annoyed at was that she couldn't snack and she couldn't have lunch. She had to, uh, other than the little tiny amounts of chocolate pudding, she couldn't eat anything between about 7.30 and 2 when the, um, when it was a bit past the last bit of peanut or last bit of chocolate pudding, which ended up not having any peanut in. She was fine. It was fine. Which meant, which was good. It was good that she'd had a fine day because it meant that today when we went back for the second day of the peanut trial, we were pretty sure that we would be getting peanut and not placebo. And we were right because they have now revealed it and it was peanut. And she had a pretty nasty reaction. I do realise it could have been worse. She isn't the type to go into anaphylactic shock. Um, so we're lucky. But we basically gave her tiny bits of peanut going up and up. Um, it wasn't pits, bits of peanut, it was peanut flour mixed into a chocolate pudding again. And she reacted to what was about 10% um, of a peanut. So yeah, 10% of a peanut equivalent in a bit of chocolate pudding. Um, she actually reacted to even less than that in one of the earlier bits but it was just a few hives around her mouth that went away very quickly um when we gave her the dose it was about 10 percent of a peanut she puffed up all over she started to cough then she started to vomit and um her eyelids started to swell up and it was horrible i felt awful i had basically taken my child into hospital to make her sick <laughs> uh it was horrible but um you know they obviously gave her the antihistamines waited for it to go down and they said she didn't have to carry on with that day of the trial because she had proved that she was allergic and reacting to whatever they were giving her so that was good we didn't have to give her any more and set off any more reactions and um waited for her temperature to go down and everything to start to go down and we are officially on the trial so that was the that was the start the bit to see whether or not we could be accepted into the trial so we're in the next stage so hopefully it will continue to go well um I have to keep remembering that I am doing this for her, for her future. So basically, if we get onto this trial, they give her a teeny tiny bit of peanut every single day. And, uh, or I do, I give her a tiny teeny bit of peanut in stuff every single day and monitor her very carefully. And um, yeah, as long as she's part of this trial, they will up the little amounts of peanut throughout the time uh, that she's in the trial. And hopefully in a few years time she could eat a few peanuts and have no reaction which is how how it is now with a lot of the people who are a few years on in the study um they can eat two or three peanuts and have no reaction whatsoever and you know for me to feel that you know if someone accidentally gave her something with peanuts in or she accidentally ate one or something like that that she wouldn't have to worry um is a big deal that would be amazing so I have to keep remembering that's why we're doing it and I didn't just take her into hospital to make her uncomfortable so yeah we're going to try and build her up a tolerance so there's been that going on this week two trips to the hospital for that the other thing is that yesterday I went to the dentist so it's Tuesday today um over the weekend my abscess came back up again I have talked about this on YouTube and Instagram a few times in the last few months but basically I had a load I had a very broken tooth and I had a load of dental work booked in just as lockdown began all of my appointments were then cancelled and they would only see people for absolutely like total emergencies which I totally understand this isn't me having a go about my dentist I actually really like my dentist 
he's a really nice man i'm really scared of the dentist he's really nice he's really calming he's really kind and he talks you through everything and i really like him but um i have pen on my hand but <laughs> saying all that they wouldn't see me and i've had four sets of antibiotics for this one broken tooth and he did see me then on the fourth time they gave me the antibiotics and he put a temporary filling in but he didn't actually get rid of the abscess that had come up so i've had an abscess four times throughout lockdown and each time they give me antibiotics and the swelling has gone down the last time the abscess didn't completely go away it got worse and worse and over the weekend it got really painful so i ended up with a dentist emergency dentist appointment yesterday and um he said i couldn't have the antibiotics he needed to deal with it then and there so the tooth was quite infected so he couldn't numb it properly so he numbed the area as best he could but the nerve of the tooth was not numb he removed the filling i'm sorry if you don't like dentist stuff this might be where you want to tune out he um inserted like a metal thingy into my tooth and wiggled the nerve around i had to have dental nurses holding me down i was literally going like this as he was in my mouth i've never felt pain like it it was worse than either of my cesarean recoveries way worse way worse uh yeah it was horrible um and then he drained it he drained my abscess through the tooth i had students come in to watch um yeah he drained okay here's the gross bit really gross bit the pus and blood out of my tooth and like out of my face because that's the thing it's not really in my tooth it's this giant swelling that's all here and you can still sort of see i think that when i smile i have a line here i don't have it on this side because this side is still swollen you can see i look wonky <laughs> so um there was a bit of relief like there's definitely a uh, swelling has definitely gone down it is still very sore because i was in the chair for quite a long time I had to come out and have multiple x-rays with this i had an x-ray with whilst i had like this metal needle thing stuck inside my tooth draining it it was not nice um but i really don't want to lose the tooth because it is a big tooth and um i eat on it <laughs> so hopefully i won't lose it um we're just gonna see how it goes and he's gonna have me back in about a week to like take away the temporary filling that he then put in after all the work he did and see if the tooth is then salvageable and, and keep it so back to the dentist i go but yeah it's been a bit of an ordeal like painful to the point of wanting to just bang my forehead against a brick wall over and over again because that might make me feel okay <laughs> uh it obviously wouldn't but i had um they're gone now but they were still up this morning i had like little um I don't know if you can still see some of them there there's a little dot but i had a uh, little half moon marks in my hands because i was i was in so much pain and i was trying not to like wave my arms around while i was in the chair and i was digging my nails in it was not nice it was not nice so yeah this week i have planned advent stuff um lots of knitting lots of blogging i've got orders to pack up at the moment i will have more um things to send out tomorrow because i haven't got time obviously it's late now so i can't go to the post office tonight but i will be going tomorrow um so things will get in the post and get out to you guys thank you so much for all of your orders you are amazing um you are my full-time hustle so um you know you make this all possible you make you know this last definitely today has made me feel like this is why i want my life to be this way not only do I feel creatively fulfilled, not only do you guys let me fulfill my dream of doing the dream things I want to do in life with yarn dyeing and making hand balm and writing patterns and all those things like are so much more fulfilling to me than any other job that I have worked. But also I am able to commit to a peanut desensitisation trial that will have me and my little girl up at the hospital, you know, once last week once this week twice next week and then every two weeks for a considerable amount of time and i don't even have to think about it i can just say yes that's the right thing for my little girl and that's what i want to do and i don't have to sit there panicking because most of the days are on a tuesday and i work 
Tuesdays at the pharmacy. So <clears throat> I'm really glad. I'm really, I can't even begin to say how much it means to me that I can be there for my kids because you guys are willing to um, invest in the things that I'm making or, you know, buy those things. Like, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I'm not sitting here and saying I'm rich because I'm not. <laughs> in fact, I'm poorer than I've ever been. <laughs> but um, I am still happier than I've ever been. And that is a big deal for me. So thank you. Anyway, I am going to stop with the soppiness because it's silly. And I'm going to go to bed. So I'm going to sign off. So if you've got all the way through this 30 minutes of me rambling with a chunky one-sided face, <laughs> then well done you. <laughs> and um, thank you as always for making me so much less of a lonely litter.